Hello, very good afternoon racing folks. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the third uh, part three of the what to observe in the paddock. I hope uh, the other two parts were very useful and maybe hopefully you implement the body weight and the coat shining and the dry coated characters. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk about uh, sweating and uh, ears and the tail. Uh, I remember one gentleman were, <laughs> was laughing when I first entered one WhatsApp group, the, what, this hell, what the hell this guy is talking about, ears and tail and all that nonsense. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> one story goes like this, folks. Uh, when I was working for John Gosden, we had a horse uh, who was Epsom Derby winner or placed second, I forget exactly. Uh, he had come from uh, UK uh, a few days ago and he was running, uh, going to run in the, um, the big race at Santa Anita, the Breeders' Cup. And uh, it wasn't given enough time and Gosden was very big in schooling. Uh, schooling is very important. I used to see lots of babies getting schooling, meaning they take him in the paddock and walk him around before the race so they get used to. Anyways, he was a little upset that the horse, it was Aga Khan's horse and uh, he was a little upset that they didn't give him enough time and uh, he was such a shrewd trainer, he kept on uh, telling me, I was the one who was supposed to take him to the uh, paddock and the uh, gate. You know, over there uh, we have to take the horse, all, not only just the paddock but all the way to the gate, uh, not only just me. Uh, one or two assistant trainers uh, to go along with and size also. I was the, what is called a hot walker, uh, that is walking hot after the race is over. Uh, <clears throat> the, he, he kept on telling me, Nilish, uh, this horse has not been given enough time to adjust and he will start sweating. So if you see, you have take a couple of other Mexicans with you and uh, tell them to run and uh, uh, get the vet. I said, but what would vet do? He said, no, I need to give some excuse. <laughs> if the horse loses to Aga Khan's uh, manager, uh, that's why. Uh, I said, okay. And he was uh, damn right on the button. Uh, the horse was okay till the paddock. The minute I started taking him to the gate, uh, slowly, slowly, slowly started sweating by the gate. It was like a whole full bucket of water would come. I, I panicked. I tell the Jose, Jose, run. Jose, run. <laughs> Wet couldn't get on the time. I, like a fool, had bet the horse. How can the horse lose his epsom derby win and blah, 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 blah. Uh, there go. <laughs> it was even money. I bet hundred some odd dollars and the horse <laughs> finished dead last. Anyway, the reason of telling you this is Pessy's gamble uh, and John Gosden's gamble, the two trainers I admire, has always been by the gate. Uh, we normally had Sheikh and Aga Khan and Sheikh Maktoum, Sheikh Mohammed, uh, Robert Sangster. Uh, they were not the gambler kind, uh, but we had a Hollywood uh, actor set. Uh, they were gamblers, so and they would bring back full of money because no bookmakers allowed. And the signal <laughs> would come very late. They would get so upset. But there were $50,000 window, $100,000 window. So it was a different story. Anyway, uh, they, um, me telling you all this thing is, folks, bet by the gate. The sweating is the most hyped up, confused uh, uh, part of the race or see the heat. Uh, if the weather is very hot, the horse normally would sweat, which is a good sign. We are looking for the horse that gets nervous because of new surroundings or he has some injury. Horses are very intelligent folks. If they have something bothering them, they'll get very nervous by the gate. And they actually they don't want to run, basically, that's what it is. But <clears throat> So uh, if you bet by the gate, which is little late for most of you because <laughs> most of you are in a rush to make the bookies rich right away. The odds open, run, 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 run. 
अरे रेज भाई यू नॉट सेंडिंग योर टिप्स इन टाइम बाबा बा 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 I I normally bed by the gate, so I am late. I know I am late, but nothing I can do. By the time I see, by the time I type, by the time I see the odd few few important minutes goes away. That's why I insist you come live on my paddock review. You can see now most of this the website. Some of the websites are expensive, so you guys don't see. But you can come on live on my YouTube video. I could tell you sweating and uh, then there is a sweat called kidney sweat. Which is like a two-inch shaving cream <laughs> by the legs or by the uh, uh, chest. You may have seen it, and you may have been confused. What the hell is this? That is called kidney sweat. It's it, it is okay. It's a, a big leather around the reins, uh, which is a little uh, problematic. Otherwise, it, it nothing big to worry about. Uh, it happens uh, uh, to some of the horses. Anyway, uh, 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 sweating of nervousness is different than sweating of the heat. So you have to kind of judge uh, what is going on. Normally, horses won't sweat much in the paddock, but then they, those who are nervous type, the minute they get by the gate, they know they are going to run. Then they get real nervous, and uh, that's the one you don't want. Now, coming to the ears, folks, uh, and the tail. As I told you in my uh, video before, uh, one horse I lost uh, my whole paycheck. That Charles who told me, "Did you watch the ears? Did you watch the tail?" I said, "No, no, no, uh, not my job. Uh, that trainer job." Then he made me see the replay of the before and the replay of the the horse that I lost. And the the moral of the story was the by the bend, that horse uh, uh, twitched the tail up. Uh, started uh, swishing uh, round, round, and uh, that the first distress signal that a horse sends during the race is the tail. The tail goes up. Now there are two, three reasons. One reason is that the jockey must have whipped. She doesn't like the whip, or he doesn't like the whip. The tail will go up, and the ears would get pinned back. Uh, that is called pin tail. You want a happy camper horse. The ears will be like this when they come in the paddock. Also, like this. You don't want a horse that like this. There, there, there's something bothering. Now, this this horse, uh, the tail went up, and and by the last 200 meters, the ears also were pinned back. And by the uh, by the winning post, it went really stressed out. That's how she lost. Uh, uh, By handicapping theory, <laughs> she was not supposed to lose, but she lost, and I lost. So that changed my whole life. Till four years, till then, I was just a paper handicapper, like most of you. I'm trying to make you guys a little bit of what is called a horseman, uh, learning from the best horsemen. I would assume son of a very famous trainer who born <laughs> in the race track, so to speak. So he knows uh, about horses. Uh, So uh, uh, the ears has to be like this in the paddock also, and by the winning post, if they do like this, like this, they are happy campers. That's the horse you want to bet next time. You don't want a horse. Length is important, but uh, you want a happy horse. The tail has to be, you know, free flowing, uh, not uh, going around, swishing. Not in the paddock also. The flies uh, bothering. It's a different story, but. Otherwise, you know, the tail stuck in the ass. Uh, it's not a good sign. And, and in the race, though, if you watch replays, that is, uh, you do watch the uh, uh, tail of the uh, the horse that especially you want to bet next time because he won. You think he has a good chance he can score an encore. The one, things to watch is the ears and the tail, of course, uh, on top of the coat and the body weight and. If the horse has not lost more than seven uh, kilos, I mean, you know, ten, fifteen kilos loss is a big no-no for me. And most of you ignore all these things. So uh, uh, these are very finer points of the racing, folks. Uh, if you forty percent or uh, is the handicapping or whoever you are following, the other forty important is the last fifteen minutes. Uh, uh, that is the paddock. 
and in, in India, 20% is the opening and the closing odds <laughs> because all of a sudden the 3 to 1 becomes uh, 80 paisa in Delhi especially and the horse <laughs> comes alone. So it's very important. In Bombay, Bangalore, it doesn't happen that much drastic. But in Delhi, UT, it does happen like that. So you want to uh, watch the horse before you bet, especially on the free websites, uh, you know, uh, one should make an attempt to learn all these things. Uh, unless you are a horseman, I don't give a damn you are handicapping. <laughs> no handicapper knows he has lost 12, 15 kilos. No handicapper, very few handicappers know he's dry coated. Very few handicappers know that he is uh, tail or he was running in the stress. Uh, uh, these are uh, very, very uh, minor, well, not minor, uh, very important aspect of a race horse. Uh, uh, you go to buy a sabji or a banana or an apple or uh, mangoes in this season, you, you want to see, touch, this, that. <laughs> But when it comes to horse racing, you have to bet in blind, without looking, without seeing, <laughs> beyond paper shuffling, oh yeah, you were third last time, you were second to this good horse, timing is good, blah, 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 and boom, bam, boom. And the money goes and then they oh, I travel, chore, he pulled, this guy pulled. I know a lot of era where he goes, but not all the time it's Trevor's fault or Suraj's fault. Three horses, I remember Trevor, uh, dry-coated, uh, very dry-coated, most of them from Nazak, you know, his stable. They were all favorites and, and they all lost. Uh, uh, so, it, 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 these the things uh, you please keep in mind. Otherwise, uh, you know, see, the penny saved is a penny, a dollar earned at the racetrack. Uh, these, my videos is not get rich, get quick rich uh, kind of a videos. These are the things that will help you in a long term and pay you a, a larger dividends, uh, what is called a physicality handicapping. Uh, so it, it's very important that you see uh, a happy horse, uh, ears uh, uh, doing ding dong uh, and tail uh, free flowing. Those three, uh, the, the three things, if you watch the coat, if you watch uh, the body weight, uh, 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 if they are less than 400, if you dry coated, if you stay away, you will save a lot of money. So, anyways, folks, uh, this is for the part three. I uh, hope you like the video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up uh, and share it with the like-minded friends. Uh, give me incentive to make more videos. The next uh, epi uh, episode is about the inefficiency of motion. Very difficult for most of you. It's about the stride movement, uh, high knee action and getting on the two feet and uh, not changing the leads and all. That is equally important. But those are for uh, real uh, <laughs> quote-unquote professionals or I'll make you uh, quote-unquote uh, a real horseman uh, uh, you can still do your handicapping, whichever method is suitable to you. But uh, do see the horse, then bet. I cannot bet even 5 rupees, folks. Uh, forget 10 without watching the horse. Good luck, folks. Thanks for watching. Do share. Do come alive on my um, thing if you are free that time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.